Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe in Macon, Georgia. We're here to talk inside Mercer Basketball with Mercer Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Coach, just a great environment uh, this past week that we want to talk about at the Kennesaw. But a milestone accomplished in the effect that was your 20th win of the season. Nine wins in a row, and according to my stats, that's 12 out of 13, 13 out of 15. So you have to continue to be pleased at how well your team continues to play each and every Can you game. keep making out a lot? Let's keep talking. I mean, is there any more stats? No, but next week I hope to add some more. Oh, those are good. Yeah, that's an amazing thing that what our guys have been able to accomplish. They've stayed to task every night out against tough environments and tough places on the road at home and it's been uh, just fun to watch them embrace each other and the string that they put together uh, as you know I mean this is a, the seventh time in 106 years of basketball the Mercers had 20 wins and uh, that's a big accomplishment I mean it's it, it shouldn't be that big we want it to be where it's normal and it happens all the time but uh, right now it hasn't transpired and that's a huge milestone for our program this season. Coach, we've played at Seton Hall. We have played at the University of Georgia. We have played at Georgia Tech. But in my opinion, we've not played in an environment like we did last Friday night up at Kennesaw State. Well, I mean, that's become a huge rivalry in the conference. Uh, they had tremendous players. They've had a, a tough go of it this year. Uh, they had 5,000 people in that building. Uh, we had probably six to 700 of our our own and it was a national TV game to boot so I, I think for them it was uh, their seniors had this opportunity to take something away from us and they got really close to getting it done we're fortunate it didn't happen that night we had some guys step up and make, make huge plays down the stretch for us to be successful. Certainly you had to contain Mark Keith Cummings in the second half, the preseason A-Sun player of the uh, year. Jake Gollum and others did a great job defensively on him. Dixon hit four threes in the second half. So certainly they made a run, got ahead by six, but uh, persevere again and your team show the resiliency. Well, we, we got some big rebounds. We got some huge steals. We got some deflections and we had a lot of guys make those plays and then down the stretch, we executed at a really high level to get some easy shots. And, I, and I, you know, it was just one of those things. So, uh, you know, you're in the midst of it. You're trying to think of things we need to run. How can we get a better shot? And the guys would make a play, and we were able to get it, get, get it accomplished through their play and their execution down the stretch. Now, one advantage you've had in just about every game this year, depth coach, you've been playing a lot of guys, but technically you had four guys not at full speed for various reasons on Friday night. So you had to have a few players give you a lot of quality minutes. Yeah, Kevin Canavera was coming back from uh, injury, was hospitalized with eye. It's a lot better. He could have played. I chose not to play him. We, we probably could have. Uh, it's going to be one of those things. We've got to, we've got to find a way to get him some minutes. Then uh, Paul Larson, we had set out. He was serving a suspension, and uh, we're hoping to have him back at some point. We'll see. It's indefinite at this point. Uh, then uh, Justin Cecil had been sick all week. He, we started him, but he didn't make, make those shots uh, that he normally does. We needed him to do. He didn't have the strength he normally has. In fact, he was running sprints today to try to get some of his conditioning back. And then, uh, you know, Daniel Corsi got sick right at the beginning. So I don't know how that happened or why it happened, but uh, he, he ran off the court. He pointed to me and said, I got to go. I said, well, you can't leave the game. We all can't leave the game. You got to stay in the game. Uh, but he took off to the locker room, and uh, Amos Mansfield, our trainer, looked at me. Why didn't you tell me what was going on? I said, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where he was going. I didn't know what he was doing. So he ended up running to the locker room, and uh, he came back out and tried to play, but he, he wasn't feeling great. Well, Coach, what goes around comes around, and certainly with your team's success, they've got the fans into it, and I kind of believe that the fans paid a little of it back in the second half. Your guys fed off the road fans' frenzy there in the uh, final few minutes. Well, we've won uh, nine games on the road already this season. Uh, that's a huge thing for any program. Uh, most teams that are in the BCS conferences would even not play nine road games in the whole totality of their season. So to win nine on the road uh, with two more to go, we'd love to be at 11 when we get to the end 
and be at 11 and 6 on the road this season, uh, that would be a huge accomplishment. But it was a great environment, great college basketball environment, and our guys stepped up to the challenge. It was it was great for us to get the W. All right, coach. We've got much more to talk about with inside Mercer basketball. We're going to be back in just a moment to talk with Warren Wolfolk our men's and women's uh, tennis coach, and we'll be back in just a minute with more Inside Mercer Basketball. All right. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where i have purchased uh five jeeps here at five star and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, uh, satisfaction, the service, just the overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. Hi, I'm Bob Hoffman, head men's basketball coach at Mercer University. And we got a great opportunity for your son to come to basketball camp and learn how to play the game at a high level. June 11th through the 14th and June 24th through the 27th is an overnight camp. And you can find out more information at BobHoffmanHoops.com or 478-301-5211. If you want to learn how to become a great player, call us or check us out on the web. Go Bears! Oh, we're back to the talking inside Mercer basketball, but we're going to uh, welcome now Warren Wolfolk, the men's and women's tennis coach at Mercer. Warren, glad to have you with us this evening. And as you're no stranger to the Mercer Athletic Program, is certainly an understatement. You served before becoming a head coach as an assistant uh, volunteer of some sort, but had a tremendous playing career. Walk us back to 2005 and six when you had the racket in your hand. Okay, 2005-2006 uh, was a good year for Mercer tennis. It actually was the best finish we had in uh, school history. We finished the regular season third in the conference. Uh, I actually started the season two and six and switched rackets and went undefeated after that point. So it was a pretty pretty good season. Okay, Warren, I'm always uh, intrigued by coaches who have two teams, men's yep. and women's. I know that's got to be a challenge. Tell us how you balance between uh, having uh, one team and then another one to coach. Oh, it's tough. It's not easy, but uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, you've got uh, two very different aspects of coaching with, with both teams. And, um, you know, coaching women and coaching men is two very, very different things. You know, you've got to uh, really know how to bear down on both sides without, uh, you know, causing issues. But um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, also in uh, tennis, you've got uh, several matches going on at one time. It's yep, not like you've right. got one basketball team to look at or one baseball team. So how do you juggle between what's going on on various courts and provide leadership there? Well, it's, it's all about knowing your players. And, and obviously tennis and, and golf, too, they're, they're two very unique sports in the sense that, you know, there's no subbing in, subbing out. If you start the match, you've got to finish the match. And for, especially for freshmen, it can be tough. So normally I like to hang around the younger guys, the, the guys that I know that have a little less experience and, and try to help them out as much as I can. Okay, you've been here since 2010, so your second season's coming up. If you would, walk us through some of the players that you expect to provide leadership for you this year. Yeah, on the women's side, I've got a player who's a sophomore from France. Her name's Lucy Pirate, and she has not lost a singles match since last year, February 11th. She's, uh, she has a 13-match winning streak going on right now, so she's been a, uh, a very hard worker on and off the court. Um, for our men, our number one player, Pierre uh, Tafelski, is also from France and has probably got the most talent I've seen out of any player in the conference. So uh, I really expect those two players to really pull our, our teams through this year. 
Now, a lot of folks may not be familiar with the quality of play in the Atlantic Sun Conference. Kind of walk us through who some of the uh, power teams are that have been historically and who you look yep. to to be the leaders this year. Yeah, well, uh, historically, uh, East Tennessee State is a, is a pretty big powerhouse within the A-Sun and the nation. Um, I would have to say Atlantic Sun is probably the most competitive mid-major conference in the country with tennis. And right now we have three teams that are ranked within the A-Sun for the men's side. And uh, with UNF and, uh, and Stetson and ETSU leading the way right now. Now, obviously, just like any other sport, recruiting has got to be critical to your program. It is. What do you look for when you see high school tennis players? What marks or qualities are you looking for? Uh, it, a lot of different things. Uh, size in tennis is a, is a pretty important thing. And um, what I look for is, is players that have the, uh, the game that can be developed in college, the, the players that have uh, you know, size, strength, power, um, players that are able to uh, mix up the game a good bit at the net. You know, the, the, the difference in college tennis and, and junior tennis is with college you've got to play doubles and singles, and a lot of junior players do not play doubles. So you've got to find a player that's has you know is very good at the net, proficient with their volleys and overheads, and uh, so you can use them in both singles and doubles in college. Now what are some of the hotbeds of high school tennis and, and even in this country as opposed to international tennis? Oh, Georgia and Florida are by far two of the biggest states in the country with tennis. Uh, California, Texas are also very big, but uh, you know, Atlanta has produced so many great players uh, over the years, and I've really fo turned my focus in recruiting to both Georgia and Florida. Uh, Florida has the biggest tennis academy in the world, uh, Bo Nick Boletari's Tennis Academy. So uh, the best junior tennis players in the country come out of these two states. Obviously, uh, Mercer being an academic institution, you have to get not only quality tennis players, but those who can succeed in the classroom. That's right. Uh, how is the challenge in the area of tennis in getting good academic student athletes? It, it's not that challenging, and, and I, I tell you, I'm very proud of my teams. This past semester was uh, very big for our women's team. They had the highest GPA on campus out of all the sports, which I think women's cross country held that record for 10 straight semesters. So. Uh, I'm really proud of them. The men also stepped it up this, this past semester. So, uh, you know, tennis is a sport where you have to be uh, smart. You have to be a smart kid to be able to uh, be out there on your own and make quick decisions, and, and you're on your own. You know, there's not a whole lot of coaching involved with tennis. All right, Coach, did you like the way I set you up for that question? I, I, I did. the door <laughs> so well. I appreciate that. Yeah. Ward Wolfolk joining us here on Inside Mercer Basketball. Coach, uh, thanks for joining us, and we certainly wish you the best of luck uh, this spring. Uh, Thank you. Sure again, when it hit the course. Appreciate it. Thank you. Warren Wolfolk visiting with us on Inside Mercer Basketball. We're going to be back in just a moment with Monty Brown, the Mercer Basketball team, when we return to the Wild Wing Cafe and more Inside Mercer Basketball. I was looking through the paper and I saw a really good ad from Five Star Ford in Warner Robins. So when I went, I was actually really picky and my salesperson worked with me until I finally found the truck that I liked and it was a black Ford. 2011 F-150 XLT Super Crew. I mean, it actually has an EcoBoost, so it's a little bit better on gas, and I love it. I would definitely recommend Five Star to all my friends. Here's the game plan. Rush into the Wild Wing Cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers. 100% Angus, 100% great. It's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year. Where? As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice. Sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Cafe as we talk more inside Mercer basketball. Now visiting with uh, Monty Brown. Monty, I asked this question of uh, your peer, 611 Daniel Corsi, a couple of weeks ago. 
you always been this big? He said he grew a foot in the fourth grade. We're still wondering about that. Personally for you, have you always been taller than the other guys around playing ball with you? Yeah, I mean, in fifth grade I was... A little closer. In fifth grade I was kind of average height, same as sixth grade. And about the seventh grade is when I started growing about two to three inches a year. And then I really grew four inches my sophomore year of high school. Because, uh, Monty, we were on the road uh, one morning having breakfast together and had a great conversation. I got to know a little bit about you, but uh, you almost uh, went to the Ivy League. Uh, give us the uh, brief down version of uh, almost going uh, somewhere else and playing. Well, my senior year after recruiting roller coaster, I ended up uh, committing to Harvard with Tommy Amaker. And their admission process, it, it takes so long and there was so much to do. And every time I came back with an ACT score, an SAT score, they wanted more and more time. And it just started getting down to almost graduation time. And I was the last one to figure out where he was going. And I had a coach back home who's good friends with Coach Hoffman, uh, Coach Calvert in Tulsa. Yeah. And they were talking one day, and Coach Calvert had let them know my situation. And Coach Hoffman and I had uh, had a couple of conversations, and within a matter of what three or three to four days, I was a Mercer Bear. Funny as we go from uh, school to school, and uh, particularly the first go round this year, the, the questions we're asked immediately are: Daniel Corsi and Monty Brown are they really that much better? I've asked uh, the other guys this, but tell us. Uh, number one, how hard you worked and what things you did to improve your game this year. And then how much does it help if you and Daniel have been about the same size pounding on one another day in and day out? Well, I'd say the, the number one thing for, for Daniel and I was this summer. Um, we kind of we had, had, made, made, had talks throughout the spring about what we wanted to be, how good we wanted to be, what we wanted to make of our size. And during the summer, we really pushed ourselves. You know, you can't do much. The coaches can't do anything with us over the summer. All we can do is weights and, and pick up at night with the team. So we made a, you know, a vow to each other. Look, we're going to go hard against each other every night. We're going to make each other better. That way, when we get to the season, we're going to be unstoppable. Now, you uh, at the free throw line, your stroke is as smooth as anyone on the team. We, we talked to Travis Smith last week, but I don't know, uh, Coach, what he did over the summer. But he just looks comfortable and hit two uh, throws here just last few days. Well, I think he's, he's always well. He's got great form. He can shoot threes if I'd let him. <laughs> if you'll let him. Okay. Yeah, he can shoot on. threes if I'd let him. I told him his senior year he might get to shoot one. Uh, if we were winning a game real big, then I might let him do that. But, but Monty's a hard worker. Uh, he had, his work ethic's unbelievable. And he's a great fit for our institution. He's, besides being a great basketball player, his academics uh, are off the charts. And he's doing a great job in the classroom, too. Tell everybody what you're doing with your classwork, what you're wanting to do, where you're at right now, and what you want to accomplish with that. Well, first off, I'm an economics major. I'm on the pre-physical therapy track, so my plan is, depending on you know basketball overseas, what I want to do after college, I definitely want to go to physical therapy school for four years and get my master's in physical therapy and open up my own practice one day, and then have the economics major to go along with it to know the business side of things, you know how to open up a business and how to run it. When we had an opportunity to go to uh, Oklahoma to play Tulsa, that was uh, right in your backyard. What yeah. kind of a thrill was that for you to uh, not only play, but to start that game there close to your family and friends? Well, that was a huge thrill. Um, I grew up in Tulsa, obviously, and I grew up watching the Tulsa Hurricane. I remember being five and six years old, my dad took me to Tulsa Hurricane game. So I've been in and out of that rental center you know, multiple times. And to be stepping on that floor as a starter, realizing, hey, I'm the one playing, that was a big thrill. And, the thing with Daniel Corsi, I mean, that was huge of him. I mean, he has so much character to say, Coach, I'm willing to get my starting spot for my fellow teammate. That was, that meant more to me than anything. And that shows just how good of a team we have. And, you know, our team theme, you know, being in the circle. I mean, he was in the circle. And he was, he was thinking about others before he was thinking about himself that game. That meant a lot to me. You guys just continue to persevere. Walk us back last week at Kennesaw. We're six down in the second half. Was there any doubt on the bench that, uh, again, we'd find a way to pull it out? Oh, no, certainly not. I mean, we've been down before. Uh, we've, we've struggled certain, you know, many times, but we always find a way to win. We always find, you know, we always make the plays to win. We listen to the coaches. We take the scouting report into play when we, when we play the games. And I really didn't have any doubt, to be honest. I mean, the whole bench was like, hey, we're down. But the whole bench was like, we got this. We're going to come back and win it. And we really didn't have a doubt. Nine wins in a row, 20 wins on the season with uh, two weeks to go. How much fun is this? This is a, this is a blast. This is, this is pure fun right here, Greg.
basketball, this is, right? This is why you play college basketball, definitely. All right, Monty, real quick, uh, looking ahead of the future, you talk about the education you're getting, but the uh, long range uh, in your adult life, what do you hope to become? I mean, to be honest, right now I want to be a physical therapist. I remember when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, I had some back problems and I went to physical therapy and I just fell in love with you know the, what, what she did with me and I was even reading her books during my physical therapy sessions, you know, week in and week out. That's when I knew I was really intrigued and that's what I wanted to pursue as a career. Okay, Monty, thanks for joining us. You are a great asset, great student athlete at Mercer. We're proud of what you've become and uh, let's get a lot more in the last couple of weeks. Let's do it, Rick. Monty Brown visiting with us this evening. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll wrap it up with Bob Hoffman with more Inside Mercer Basketball. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where as a business owner you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice. Sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Service department is out of sight. You can pull in there the uh, garage over there and they will meet you before you cut the engine off. They know you by name. How can I help you, Mr. Ross? I can't, you know, get that kind of service no place else but here at Five Star. All of my friends, I always tell them what good service you get at Five Star. I love to talk and I like to tell the truth. Back at Wild Wing. Hey, Macon, Georgia, we're talking inside Mercer basketball with head coach Bob Hoffman. Well, coach, it's hard to believe, but uh, here we are about 48 hours or less from uh, getting on the road trip of the regular season. But uh, we've got a couple of Jacksonville teams that are probably uh, licking their chops for a little revenge, maybe. We've got our hands full this weekend. No doubt about it. Jacksonville's one game out of making a tournament, one game behind Stetson. They have three games at home. Stetson has three on the road. So uh, they're going to have everything working for them uh, when we run into that gym I know what they're going to bring it won't have the crowd like Kennesaw had but the determination for them to finish and get a chance to extend their season is going to be a, a big big momentum thing as we walk into that gym to play. Coach I watched Jacksonville and East Tennessee State on Monday night in uh, Johnson City and you just don't go in there and beat those guys like Jacksonville did the second half so certainly probably a dangerous team anyway, but a team playing much better than the first time we had them at our house. Well, Cabell's playing at a high level. He's averaged about 25 points the last four games. Uh, he was huge in the second half in that game, was making play after play to keep them in the game and then helped them get the lead. And they were, they were pressing East Tennessee State up and down the floor. So we know that we're going to be pressure. We know they're going to come after us. We know they're going to probably zone us. They're going to bring all kinds of different things at us. So uh, we're going to have to respond once again and be at a high level with our concentration and our execution to have a chance to win uh, at, that, at that gym. Because, uh, you know, what I told our guys today, it's going to be important for us to match what they're going to bring because they're going to be desperate. Yeah. But they can't be at a level playing at a higher level than us because we've got something that we're playing for also and uh, that's an opportunity to play for a conference championship. So we got to continue to have the momentum, and we, but we cannot walk into that gym thinking anything but that we're going to have to give our best effort. Now, Coach, let's take the point that you're making now. Let's go one step further than just not taking Jacksonville for granted. Your team justifiably is getting some recognition. You've got uh, votes in the mid-majors and now even an early bracket out there showing you in the tournament. How hard is it now not to be distracted by that? We've not really had that problem the last couple of years, but how do we keep from becoming distracted about things that aren't within grasp yet? Well, I hope we have that distraction every year because that means uh, <laughs> we're, we're playing for something fantastic and 
we're getting a chance to compete at a high level in our conference, and that means other people are recognizing what our guys are doing collectively uh, right now. And uh, you can't focus on those things. In fact, I told our young men we've got to make the circle even tighter right now. It's almost like if you're on a losing streak and everybody's pointing fingers and trying to tell you what you should be doing. It's the same way right now. We're on a winning streak, but we got to make sure our focus is on preparation for the games, preparation for continuing to get better as an individual and a team. And I, that's what we've talked about. That's what we can't listen to folks outside the circle or patting us on the back, telling us how good stuff is going. You've got to continue to finish this thing right. We only have a few weeks left. It's not time to get away from what we've done right. It's far above the most important thing that we continue to do, the things that we've done to get to this point, yeah. and that's to say it. Tight, stay a tight-knit group and finish strong. And of course this late in the season, senior leadership is always something a coaching staff will look to. Justin Cecil has not felt well the last couple of weeks. I know all the Mercer fans are really hoping Justin feels like giving you a good solid 40 minutes on Saturday. Yeah, we need him at a high level on the road. He's hit big shots in a lot of environments. Uh, I know he's a Florida kid, so these will be two opportunities to play in gyms that he's played a lot in. and. I'm sure he'll have a lot of fans and a lot of family at those games, so we're hoping that he steps up and has huge basketball games on the weekend at Jacksonville. Coach, as we wrap it up here at Wild Wing this evening, two weeks from tonight, we're going to be playing in the conference tournament. Are you getting pumped yet? Uh, I am pumped, but not for that. I'm pumped for this weekend, staying on task of, of trying to get to the end and have a chance to play for something that hasn't happened very often, but we hope becomes more commonplace around the Mercer campus. Well, Coach, in addition to the great wins we've had this year, I think you've seen a lot of character uh, development as well among your guys. Just the story just a moment ago of Monty Brown, Daniel Corsi, some great stories of character toward one another this season that I know you and your team are going to carry forward for a lifetime. Well, there are multiple stories. Those were a couple, but I just like the fact of how in practice they continue to lift each other up and push, push each other to higher levels. And I think if we continue this that way the last few weeks, uh, there's no telling where this team could finish. And I'm, I'm excited to see where the ride's gonna take us. Nine wins in a row, 20 wins on the season. Let's hope when we gather next week, Coach, Woo! we're looking at the grand finale for a regular season championship. That would be a blessing. Let's do it. From Wild Wing Cafe, thanks for joining us once again with head coach Bob Hoffman. This is Rick Cameron. You've been watching Inside Mercer Basketball. Thank you.